Hey everyone, welcome to the Farm and Pastor's Wife. I'm so glad you're here. And let me welcome you to It's a Candy Christmas 2022 Candy Collaboration. I am so thankful and grateful to be a part of this. This collaboration is hosted by Sherry at Southern Roots by Sherry. I am so happy to be a part of this. Let me tell you, it is a whole month long lineup of different YouTubers giving you great candy content for Christmas. And I feel very inadequate because I'm not a candy maker. So, but we're going to give it a try and I'm actually going to give you two, hopefully. <laughs> we'll see how this first one goes. But um, there's lots of wonderful wonderful things coming. There's some giveaways. I'll put all the information down in the description below and everything you need to know um, down in the description. But be sure to look for that hashtag or for that title. It's a Candy Christmas 2022 and you will find all the content. There is going to be a playlist provided. Um, <clears throat> so we will, I, I don't know I'm not sure how that's going to work, so because I'm not a techie type person, and <laughs> so I got to figure out how that's going to work. But anyway, I will leave you everything you need to know down in the description. So let me tell you, <clears throat> I have a favorite candy, and it is sold at Cracker Barrel. And I was really disappointed the last several times I've been in there, and they haven't had it. And so finally... And, and because, you know, I'm dieting, and so therefore I just chalked it up to, okay, this is okay. But this one day I was going to give in, the day we went to get Christmas trees, I was going to give in and buy it. They were out again, or they didn't have it again. And so I asked, have y'all quit carrying this candy? And I described it and everything, and they said, this lady just came in and bought all that we had. So... I'm going to give it a try. I have found a recipe online and we're going to try to make it. It is the the maple creams, not the maple nut goodies. I love them too. I love anything maple, by the way, but this is maple cream. Now, this is not per se very Christmassy, but it's going to be my Christmas <laughs> candy if it turns out. So, and the nice thing about this candy is you only need one ingredient. One ingredient candy, and that's maple syrup, pure maple syrup. So that's what we're going to get started with. I'll meet you over at the stove. Okay, so the first thing we need is to measure out two cups of pure maple syrup. Oh my goodness. And you know the little cap that's on the lid that seals it when it's, so you know it hadn't been tampered with, the tamper seal. I gave it a lick and it's really good. <laughs> it is really good. All right, and I'm gonna be sure to scrape and get every bit of this goodness. I'm gonna turn my burner on. Oh, let me tell you what I have here too. I have a heavy bottomed pan. I have a candy thermometer in it. Hold on, I'm gonna turn you down so you can see. I have my pan here, I have a candy thermometer and I have it turned where I am able to, to kind of get down here, so you can see what I'm doing, where I can get down here and see the red mark as it comes up. Oh my goodness, that maple syrup is good. Okay guys, mm. that is good. All right, we're gonna turn it on kind of a medium high and we're gonna get it to 235 degrees. I'm going to stir it occasionally so it doesn't burn on the bottom. We're going to get it to 235 degrees. Once it reaches, oh, and I got to make sure my thermometer is down in the candy. Are you down in there? I want it down in the candy, but I don't necessarily want it um, touching the bottom. <clears throat> you can get a false high reading if it's touching the bottom. And so I'm just going to lightly stir this until it reaches 235 degrees. 
All right, I'll see you back when we get to that point. Okay, everybody, we are at 220 degrees right now. You can see that it is boiling. So we are almost there. Got just a few more minutes to go. Okay, everybody, we are almost there. We are at 230. Two. Almost there. We are not far from this at all. Okay, I believe we're good. I'm just going to turn my burner off. I'm going to lay my spoon in a little dish that I have here because I don't want sticky all over my clean cabinet. And yeah, y'all are right. This morning I said something about cleaning. I had to clean before they come to clean. <laughs> Bryant thinks that is so weird why you have to clean before you, people come to clean. All right. So we are just going to set this aside right now. And we're just going to let this. Oh, I actually need that thermometer back in there. Don't take the thermometer out because you need to know when it comes down to 175. So I need to pay attention to this to see when it comes down to 175. Now, while we're waiting on that, I don't know how much I have of this. I mean, how much I'm going to have. But I bought these moles the other day. You may have remembered. Um, I found these. Isaac made some gummy bears. Um, so we're going to try this. And then if I have extra left over, we'll just pour it in um, a pan of some sort and scoop it out. <laughs> but um, right now I'm going to watch the temperature and wait for it to come down to 175. Okay, y'all, we're almost down to um, 175, and when you're waiting for it to come down to the 175, you don't want to stir it or mess it or anything. You just let it sit. Let it sit and cool, and we are almost there. We're almost at 175. It is dropping very slowly. Um, I'm not sure how many minutes. I haven't timed it because I've just been watching this. But it's taken quite a while to come down. So we're we're still about two degrees away. <laughs> so, okay, I'll bring you back when we get there. Who knows how long those two degrees are going to take. Okay, y'all, I say we're there. So I'm going to move my thermometer out going to put back my wooden spoon and we're going to come over here to the island where it's a tad bit shorter than the stove. Okay, so now we're we're on to the hardest step there is. It is this step. And I'm going to do this and just stir and 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 stir for several minutes until it changes color and it becomes kind of a creamy color. And so my arm's going to get really tired. It's going to get a good workout. I should have an apron on. In fact, I believe I may go grab one real quick. Let me go grab an apron because I don't want to wear maple syrup. Okay, I've been at the stirring for a couple of minutes and you can see it has turned from a dark amber brown to almost a caramel color. So we're going to keep going further. All right, y'all, it's starting to really seize up a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting them in the molds. And y'all wish me luck here.
All right, guys, I'm just going to fill them up. Who knows what they're going to turn out like, but we'll see. All right, we'll be back in a little bit. Pray for me, y'all, because this is my favorite candy, and I really want some. <laughs> All right, get in there. I probably stirred a little too far. I probably should have stopped, but y'all, look at this. I'm, I'm going to try to scrape off to where I flattened the molds. Maybe I should just leave it. Maybe I'll leave it and then clean them up when I unmold them. That's what I'll do. I'll just leave them in here and clean it up when I unmold them. But let me tell y'all, I already tasted it. <laughs> Mom will taste it again. Y'all, oh, I nailed it. That is that candy. I don't have to go to Cracker Barrel anymore. <laughs> I know how to make it. And how easy was that? All you basically need to know, you don't even know how to, need to know how to cook, just how to read a thermometer. Oh my goodness. Now, I don't know how pretty these molds are going to turn out, because I've never done candy and molds and stuff like that. But I know how good this tastes. My husband is not going to believe that I have mastered the candy. All right. I'll see you guys back when this comes to room temperature and it's completely set up and I'll unmold them as ugly as they might be. I do know it tastes good. Now it is sweet and it is rich. Now I can sit and eat the whole box that comes from Cracker Barrel in one setting. But for most people, I would say you couldn't eat much of this. But that's good. Like, you don't need much. Mm. I love this stuff. And I even thought, the one at Cracker Barrel, it's almost like it has a crusty outside, but then on the inside, it's just this smooth deliciousness. And I thought, I wonder how they did that. You know, because there's nothing added into this candy. I wonder how they did that. I'm going to see if I can get a piece out and show you. Um, but it happens automatically. The outside, I don't know if you can see, becomes kind of like a hard little, you know, I thought I was going to have to roll it in sugar or something, but the outside that's to air gets a little small crunch, not nothing major. But then the inside, oh. <laughs> It's so good. Y'all, well, now you know what my favorite candy is at um, Cracker Barrel. Well, now, who needs Cracker Barrel? Well, I still like shopping in their store. And I like their biscuits. <laughs> I like a lot of things they have. Hash brown casserole. Alright, we're going to let this come to room temperature. I'm going to clean up and get things out for recipe number two. Before we move on to recipe number two, I just want to say how weird it is that this, once it gets to this stage, let me scoop up a little. Once it gets to this stage and this color, it is a totally, not totally different flavor, but it's a pretty different flavor than it was when it was in the syrup stage. I mean, that is so wild to me because it's that's the only thing in this is that syrup. That is it. So, all right. All right, guys. I may have cooked it a little too long. I mean, not cooked it, but stirred it too long. I may should have poured it up a little bit before the, I did. But, oh well, it was my first time making it. I'm just glad I nailed it. 
even if I'd have poured it in like a fudge pan and cut it out in pieces like fudge. Hey. All right, now on to recipe number two. Back again, psych. <laughs> uh, I kind of wanted to finish this candy up before we um, transition to the other one. Um, and I tried to unmold it and I did it a little too soon and I broke his head. <laughs> There's his little head. Y'all, I don't care if these molds didn't come out. I know this candy is delicious. And I think next time what I'll do is I'll pour it up just a little bit sooner, pour it in a pan and cut it out like fudge. Or you could take cookie cutters at that point and cut out shapes like that. Um, I'm just so glad I know how to make this is my favorite candy in the world and I now know how to make it I've never known how to make it but I do now okay we'll wait just a few more minutes see if it cools and see if I can pop one out for you without cutting its head off okay guys I got some cleaning up to do I just got to pull off the cut off these little areas that I overfilled um, but here he is and he's so good all right I'm going to now move on to recipe number two and we'll get Bryant's thoughts on it when he gets here um, let me get everything out we need and we'll get started on recipe number two okay so deciding what kind of candy to make I wanted to make a peanut brittle I wanted to make things different than what I normally make every year I get kind of into the same old, same old, making the same old thing every time. So I wanted to make peanut brittle. Well, guess who can't find Spanish peanuts? And I know I can use the roasted, but I was really looking for the Spanish peanuts and I haven't been able to find them. And lo and behold, if I didn't come across this recipe for mock peanut brittle. Now, I know we all have a variation of this at some point in time, but we're gonna make it just kind of fun and try to make it a little festive just by adding some M&Ms to it um, but let me tell you to start out with I've got a bowl here that has eight cups of cornflakes in it I also have a sheet pan that I have um, sprayed down with coconut oil and it is greased and ready to go all right so we're on to making mock peanut brittle I'm not sure that's what everybody calls it but it's what we're calling it, and that's what the recipe book calls it. So that's what we're going with. So I'll meet you over the stove. Okay, to start with, I have greased my measuring cup with some coconut oil, and I'm going to pour a cup of light. You could use light or dark. Cairo syrup. I used the light because that's the one I have the most of. I have some dark, but um, I don't have a lot. And even though I sprayed it, I'm going to I'm still going to scrape it. and get that in the dishwasher so it don't mess up my sink. And I'm coming over here with my sugar. And we're going to add a cup. I'm going to go ahead and turn my burner on. We're going to add a cup of sugar. There we go. Let me get this out. And we're just, oops, I did not want to do that. And we're just going to um, bring this to a bowl. All we need to do is bring it to a bowl. So that was a cup of Cairo and a cup of sugar. Good and sweet. I want to get all this candy made so I can make a healthy supper, a low-carb supper. 
Did y'all see how much of that maple candy I ate? I know you didn't because I was eating a lot of it off of off camera. My word, it was so good. All right, I'll bring you back when it comes to a boil. Okay, guys, it has come to a boil. Um, I moved it over to that burner just so um, the flame was coming out on the outside of the pot over here. It's a bigger burner. All right, so to this, I'm going to add in one cup, carefully, because you don't want it to splatter, one cup of crunchy peanut butter, whatever your favorite brand is, but you want to be sure to get the crunchy, crunchy peanut butter. All right, and I'm also going to add in just a splash of vanilla. Just a little splash. And I'm just gonna stir this until that peanut butter all melts. And then, all right, see how good that's melting down? What I'm going to do is, as soon as it melts, I'm going to meet you over at the island. Okay, everybody, there's a few lumps in there that I have worked out. And I've got, got me a metal spoon that you can use whatever you have. I'm going to push you guys back there. All right, I'm going to take my peanut butter and syrup mixture and just pour it over these cornflakes. goodness if you like peanut butter <clears throat> now believe it or not y'all I have never made this before um, I know some people make this and um, I don't know what they call it I just want to be sure, and it's okay if you break up the cornflakes, that's totally fine. All right, now we're going to get our pan over here, and I'm going to, best I can, dump this out. I'll get the rest out. Give me just a minute. I gotta. I want to get this all patted out. All right. And you're probably wondering, how in the world are you going to make that festive? I'm just going to sprinkle some M&Ms on it. I mean, don't M&Ms make everything festive? to get everything off and onto the pan. All right. Now, I have peanut m and not peanut m ms but peanut butter m and um, So we could go on with the, the theme of peanut butter and add the peanut butter m and ms and I have some plain m and ms um, What do y'all think? Which would you use? I'm thinking plain because there's a lot of peanut stuff going on in here. So let's, um, let me grab the peanuts. Did you hear me say grab the peanuts? I meant the M&Ms. I think I'm going to use the regular, the plain, because my grandbabies love these. And so I'm just going to save them for them. So, I was thinking just here and there, maybe doing like a little holly leaf look. 
and it'll stick because this corn syrup or this caro syrup, I mean, it's definitely going to stick to it. And you can actually spray your hand if you want to and come in and mash it down further. Because we're actually going to try to break this up. And I know you guys can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I'm going to get fired from this collab. <laughs> They're going to say, you chose the easiest recipes in the world to do. And, and then you didn't even film it good. Um. All right. All right, guys, I'm just going to keep doing this. And I'll see you back here as soon as I'm done. And this is cooled, and we'll give it a taste. Okay, so y'all know I've been doing this candy collab. And so guess who just came in? Hey, 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 now, everybody. I want y'all to see his face when he tastes the first one I made. Right. I want y'all to see his face. You tell him what I've been doing all day? No, well, so that you just had an event with Isaac. Yep. I've been shooting ski. And I went to a poultry thing. Right, I'm dying for him to taste it. Why? Just taste it. Was that a heart? No, it was, it was, it's the legs of a gingerbread man. Peanut butter fudge. What is it? What about How did you get peanut butter out of that? What about today? You can have it. Hang on. Hang on. Maple. <laughs> Maple um, candy. Does yes. it not oh, taste that, like it? That is killer. I nailed it. Okay, now here's your another one to try. Hold on. We're doing a video. You might as you well might do taste test again since I, I guessed wrong the first time. Got he corn. had peanut butter on the brain because he's a peanut butter fanatic. Got cornflakes in it? Bubbles. What? Bubbles. Oh, that's really good. Like a, a cornflake ball. Well, I did it flat, like as in peanut brittle, like a mock got peanut brittle. Got marshmallow in it? Nope. That's really good. That's really good. Both of them are good sweet treats for, for Christmas. Or Very any good. time. All right, guys. I'll but, be... but she loved the maple. Uh -huh. <laughs> the maple was good. It does it not taste just it like does. just like it. Just like her. I have learned to make it. And that's a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll be back, guys. Okay, everybody, I hope you enjoyed so much the candy segment. Y'all, I'm so excited that I now know how to make that maple candy. And I'm even more excited at how easy it was. All you need to know how to do is read a thermometer and have good arm muscles. And I don't even have really good arm muscles. <laughs> but um, the only thing I would change is I think I beat it too long. Um, it should have been a little more pourable when I poured it up. But it's still so good. And it's like I nailed it. So, okay. Um, thank you guys for watching. Go check out all the other videos to the collab. And I will see you guys next time on The Farm and Pastor's Wife. And remember, if the grease is hot enough, you can fry anything. Bye, y'all.